Judge Goyne, I write from the transcript that Chief Scott Hughes, a witness herein, having been first duly sworn, was examined and deposed as follows. Tell us your name. Scott Hughes. How are you employed? Currently Chief of Police in Hamilton Township, Warren County. How long have you been so employed? I've been the Chief of Police since March. What was your police experience prior to your current duty as Chief of Police up there? Prior to Chief in Hamilton Township, I was Assistant Chief in Riverside, Montgomery County for about eight months. Spent the bulk of my career, about 15 plus years, in Springfield Township. Prior to Springfield Township, I spent a couple of years in Green Hills. In addition to your duties as a police officer up through the rank of police chief, over those years and currently, do you also teach and instruct other officers? Yes, sir, I do. And what qualifies you to teach and instruct other officers? Sure. So I've been instructing basic police academy since about 2000. One of the topics that I have taught in the police academy since I started 15, 16 years ago has been stops and approaches, which is also known as car stops. Additionally, I hold the title of Police Academy School Commander and recently was asked to sit on the OPADA Peace Officer Curriculum Board to revamp the curriculum for traffic stops. Pursuant to that career, especially in teaching, have you ever instructed the defendant, in this case, Ray Tensing? Yes, I have. Do you see him in court here today? I do. Point him out, please. Seated across the table wearing the gray shirt. Did you ever teach him any of these courses you are referring to? I taught Ray Tenzing in a course that I teach for a company called Calibre Press. That class is entitled Tactics and Traffic, and I taught Ray in December of 2014. Could you describe basically what you teach in that course or summarize the main points that you teach in that course? Sure. So it's a class that we teach across the country that primarily deals with traffic stops and the dangers surrounding traffic stops some best practices with regard to making traffic stops, everything from how to position the police cruiser to how to do high-risk felony stops. And are there certain cautions you impart to the police officers to make sure that they can do this in a safe, ma safe manner without injuring themselves or other people? There are, yes. And what are some of those? Well, one of the big things that we emphasize is making passenger side approaches as opposed to going up on the driver's side. We feel like the passenger side approach gives you, keeps you out of traffic, number one, and number two, it gives you some tactical advantage. As with a lot of the things, if you will, that we teach in law enforcement training, there's always variables. There's, there's certain terrains, certain conditions where you can't go up on the right-hand side of the vehicle, so you may have to make a driver's side approach, so that's one. What about where to position themselves if it's a regular traffic stop it appears to be there's only one person in the vehicle. Where do you position when you're inquiring with the driver of that vehicle? So again, we let the officer decide. Again, I encourage passenger side approaches. A lot of officers do the traditional driver side approach. When they do the driver side approach, we just encourage them to stay behind what we refer to as the B pillar. Is that B as in Bravo? I'm sorry, yes, B as in boy. And that's the post between the front driver's side window and the rear driver's side window. That's correct. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm talking fast. We encourage officers that if you are going to make a driver's side approach, stand behind the B pillar, stay away from squaring with the driver's side window, things like that. What if you make a decision if for whatever reason you want to get the driver out of the vehicle? What are some of the things you instruct them? What's the best practice to go about doing that? especially if either the car is still on or the key is still in the ignition. Yes. So one of the things we stress in the class is the fact that when you get people out of the vehicle, it's always a very, it's a very dynamic situation, especially from the driver's side. When they get out of the car, if you're not, if you don't create enough distance between you and the violator as they exit the car, they could shove you out in the traffic. You could be fighting with them in the driver's door jam, if you will. You know, if they open the door and you're standing there, that could become, you have the potential of fighting there, being pushed into traffic, like I said. So one method that we teach, one way that we instruct officers to handle this, is to have the motorist turn the car off and hand the officer the keys. Some officers will have them turn the car off and put the keys up on the dashboard. And that's to keep the person from driving off? 
Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. We want to make sure that your, the car is turned off so they can't take off on you. Okay? Once they turn the car off and you either take possession of the keys or the keys are up on the dashboard, they can't get to them, then we would instruct officers in the right conditions. In other words, if you've not stopped an SUV or truck that sits up real high, if you're stopping just a regular, quote unquote, regular vehicle, passenger sized vehicle, one option you can do is you can have the driver, while still in the driver's seat, you can have them put his hands either on top of his head or put his hands behind his back and basically rotate towards you. So he's facing the passenger side window? That's correct. He would be facing the passenger side. And again, with his hands on the top of his head or, or his hands behind his back, you would simply have him extend his hands out to you if they're behind his back or, you know, lean back if he's got his hands on the back of his head and then apply the handcuffs. That keeps from having, from you having to reach inside the car and it keeps an officer, let me just give you an example. If you have a female police officer who is five foot and they're stopping a defendant who is six four, there's a little bit of awkwardness, right? The defendant is real tall, you're real small. If he got out of the car, now you're overpowered. By keeping them inside the car and handcuffing him that way, it takes a lot of that height and weight out of the differential. So any officers with regards to physical strength should be able to do this with no issues. And you just used the phrase reaching inside the car. Is there anything you teach about re reaching inside a vehicle that you have stopped? Yes. It's always discouraged to reach inside of the vehicle, especially if the car is running and there's a driver in the driver's seat, yes. Is that something you emphasize in the training? We do talk about that in training, yes. And I know you have a PowerPoint, but this is a couple of slides from the PowerPoint. This is a PowerPoint that you use in this course that you indicated that you taught to Ray Tensing in December of 2014, is that correct? Correct. If I could show you what's been marked as State's Exhibits 21A and 21B, ask if you can identify those. Um, yes, so 21A is a screenshot of a commercial that I use from Farmers Insurance. It's a cheesy commercial, but it reflects a, it's a teenage, teenager driving a car and he crashes it into a front yard. It shows the actor in the movie reaching inside the car, taking the keys out. And what I do is, on the PowerPoint slide, it stops when the guy reaches inside the car. I display this, and on the screen it says, never, 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 never reach into a vehicle. Again, I just kind of use that to illustrate when I speak. It kind of gives you a visual of what I'm saying. Okay, and the jurors are not here right now, but we will at this point in your testimony display this. Move this into evidence. Any objection? Okay. We will display that for the jury at this point. States Exhibit 21B, if you can identify that. 21B, unfortunately, this is a PowerPoint slide that I use immediately following this one that depicts Officer Kevin Crayon from the city of Cincinnati. Unfortunately, back in 2000, he stopped the vehicle or had an encounter with a young man at a gas station parking lot on Coleraine Avenue and reached inside the vehicle. He got entangled inside the car. The car took off and it ended up killing Officer Kevin Crayon. The young man driving the car also passed away. I popped the pop this up as a reminder, unfortunately, of the realities that we face in this profession every day. I would at this point move into evidence states exhibit number 21B. No I'll display this for the jury. So you're basically emphasizing to the students that you don't reach inside a car because if you do, this might be what happens to you. You might end up like Officer Kevin Crayon and lose your life as a result. Correct. No further questions of this witness. Chief Hughes, did you go straight from high school to the police academy? I worked. I wasn't old enough to go into the academy, but yes, uh, there was a couple year break. Okay, and then the first, your first job out of the academy was with Green Hills, correct? That's correct. Did you know Ray Tenzing at the Green Hills Police Department? I did not. Okay, and then you're a little older than he is, correct? Correct. And then you went to Springfield Township, correct? Correct. And you spent, what, 15 years? About 15 years, yes. And during the course of your employment with Springfield Township, did you ever have any contact with Ray Tenzing? I did. And, what, and that was when he was with the Green Hills Police Department? Yes, sir. 
During your police career, you've had firearms training, correct? I have. Does that firearms training ever teach you to shoot to kill anybody or teach you to wound anybody? No. Shoot to stop the threat. Thank you, sir. You indicated you teach at a particular police academy now, correct? I've taught at two academies here locally. I taught at Butler Tech and I also taught at Great Oaks. And are you teaching now? I'm teaching at Butler Tech now, yes, sir. During your 17 years or 15 years on the street or whatever, it was, well, I guess it, it's 17 by the time you had Green Hills on, correct? Yes, sir. Did you ever reach into a car? I have. Now, you would agree with me, would you not, that vehicle stops are one of the more potentially dangerous aspects of the law enforcement profession? Absolutely. That comes right out of the OPATA manual, is that correct? That's correct. Would you agree with me that the OPATA manual also says never reach into a car with your dominant hand? If you showed me the curriculum, I don't want to say yes or no, and here's why. The curriculum was just rewritten, so depending upon what version you're looking at, because I know I'm going to assume that Ray's version was the older version. That may well be in there, yes, sir. I would have to see it. I'm sorry. Again, I'm referring to, and I don't have it back here in this deposition room. Well, I might. I have it on a disc specifically. Sure. I don't have that with me, actually, but how about no? I don't have that particular site with me, but if I told you that in the vehicle stops and approaches section, it indicated that an officer should never reach into a car with his dominant hand. Would you agree with that? Maybe in the old manual. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be difficult because I, the only reason I say that is in the new manual, I know that was a topic of discussion. So I apologize. I'm not trying to not answer your question. What is the dominant hand? Is it ref if it's referring to a dominant hand, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what that is? Sure. The dominant hand would reflect primarily what hand the officer would draw his sidearm with. So if he's right-handed and he carries his weapon on his right-hand side, then the right hand would be dominant. If he's left-handed and carries his weapon on the left-hand side, he would be left-hand dominant. Thank you, sir. And actually, I believe that is in Section B. It's on page 31 of 72 pages in the vehicle stops and approaches. 16I says the officer should never reach into a vehicle or grab anything near the suspect with the dominant hand. Have you ever seen that before? That sounds like the old manual that he would have been, that he would have received when he went through the academy. That sounds correct. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sorry about the confusion. That's okay, I'm sorry. You talk about handcuffing a suspect or one way to control a suspect when you're going to get him out, get them out of the car, and you talk about what I'll refer to as a handcuffing in the car technique. Yes, sir. That would require, in order to accomplish that, that you open the car door where the suspect is seated, correct? Correct. You indicated that you emphasize in your training that officers ought to make passenger side approaches, correct? Absolutely. That is not written in stone or any absolute requirement? No, it's not. Would you agree with me that there are no absolutes in law enforcement? Correct. Every situation is different? Yes. And you have the, you've just shown the jury, or the jury will be shown slides from your traffic course. The one that says never, never, never reach into a car, in the ideal world, that's what would happen, correct? That's correct. In the real world, I would assume that you would agree with me that that doesn't happen, especially all the time, 100% of the time. Yes. Would you agree with me that officers frequently and often reach into cars? Frequently is a tough word. I would say it does happen. And it happens around the United States. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yes, it does. Would you agree that there are often stories in the news about officers who have done that and who have been dragged as a result of it? Absolutely. And would you agree with me that there are oftentimes stories, oftentimes officers will do that and nothing ever happens? They pull it off safely? Correct. And would you agree with me that there are times when officers are forced to reach into cars? Yes. Now, you mentioned Kevin Crayon from the Cincinnati Police Department. Can you elaborate a little bit on what happened with Kevin Crayon, if you know? I could tell you what I think I know. How's that? In that, Kevin got dispatched to a gas station on Coleraine Avenue for a juvenile driving recklessly. Kevin went to turn the car off, at which point the kid started to go, started to put the car in drive. Something transpired, and Kevin reached into the car. As I understand it, his hand got caught up in the steering wheel. The kid accelerated rapidly down Coleraine Avenue with Kevin, in essence, hanging on. 
Kevin pulled a service revolver out or weapon out and fired a round. Kevin fell off the vehicle, and I believe the kid drove home to Winton Terrace or Bahama Terrace or Hawaiian Terrace where he passed away. And Kevin Crayon also passed away as a result of that incident, correct? Correct. And that is your prime example of never, never, never reach into a car. Right. But you agree that it happens? Correct. Would you agree that oftentimes officers react instinctively in situations? Yes. I think we're finished. You indicated sometimes you're forced to reach into a car? Yes. For example? I think the most common one would be when a drunk driver passed out behind the wheel. Guys will reach into the car and they'll take the keys out of the ignition so the guy doesn't start driving away. You know, if you walk up to a car and a guy pulls out a knife and starts stabbing the kid next to him, you're going to reach in and try to grab the knife from him. There are those types of situations, yes. And you indicated that you're not taught to shoot to kill. You use the terminology stop the threat, is that correct? Right. But sometimes to stop the threat, you will shoot to kill. Right, yes. Nothing else from us. Nothing further. Concluding the deposition.